cool. So uh, let's talk about the SS tiers first, and then we'll work our way down to the C tiers. Um, C tier doesn't necessarily mean bad. Obviously, they're not the, the best, but if anything, I'd actually be more willing to move um, the Serga to B rank rather than just leaving them at C. But C tier doesn't mean that this character is the worst in the game. Or, no, not, not saying that at all. Um, it's just overall gameplay and just how the game works. So I'm going to start with Fairy. So at the moment, I feel like Fairy is actually the, the strongest character in the game. Um, she she's incredible with the amount of stuff that she can do, setups. Um, she can knock you down off to do like the EX quick throw, um, throw the pet, run up to you, and just kind of like the general setup that people do. Throw the pet, run up, jump, and then do an overhead, kind of like a um, it's a plink where you just jump up and do a little overhead. Or you're guessing if she's gonna do a low. She gets a combo off a of front grab um, if she has a super um, already there. Um, and her normals are just very, very scary. Her 5H is almost full screen. Um, great Pokemon tool. And her, I believe, when she, one of her supers actually allows her to link her normals better. So, as the game currently is, and this also coincides with Matera. It's hard to it's hard to say it without like kind of putting a bit of shade, but because of the way that the game's defensive options are, it makes Zonas really really strong. And I haven't put Matera into S tier because she's got her own faults, which I will go into. But Fairy is crazy right now. If there was dash block and a bit more leniency with the defensive options, like evading um, and dash forward when you press R two and forward then I feel like it wouldn't be as bad as it is now because right now, sometimes for certain characters it can feel almost impossible to get in and the matchup just feels absolutely horrible unless you just constantly rush them down um, and then even saying rush them down Fairy has a DP I don't know why, but she does she's got her, I believe it's 2, her two on 4 uh, where she spins the ring around her, right? if that hits you normal light EX, it, send, it resets the, the neutral game because it sends you back to the other side of the screen. Then you have to start the whole process over again. Running back in, taking whips, throwing her geeky out, you got to like dash in, all of that stuff. You try and jump, you get EX, DP out of the sky, neutral reset. I don't know what that was, that's someone outside fighting. Sorry, it's coronavirus season. Uh, people are literally fighting at the, the supermarkets. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, so that's the general reason why Fairy's quite strong at the moment. She throws her whips, um, keeps you out of range. She has an EXDP. She doesn't need it. I'd, I'd prefer if she just had a regular 2H but had long range. That way, it'd still be kind of busted, but it wouldn't be as bad because. With a lot of zoners in, in, in fighting games, once you get in, that's your opportunity. And the fact that she's got so much utility, it just makes it almost impossible to fight her. So that's why I, I definitely thought that she's one of the strongest in the game at the moment. She has a Spider-Man swing <laughs> and a dive as well. So she's, she's very strong. Now, Gran, I've put him above uh, Catalina, but they're very, very close. In, in some cases, I may even say they're equal at this point. Um, they both have dangerous combo potential in the corner, like literally off of one hit you can just get blown up. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're really really strong characters at the moment. Gran, I feel, can be slightly more obnoxious um, with his 2U cancel into um, EX Fireball. Um, the boot kick, the EX boot kick that he does, um, the wall bounce. On that is a bit obnoxious as well because it doesn't even have to be like directly at the wall say like a character like um setter where if she does her ex fireball if you're not like literally directly next to the wall you may not get a wall bounce i know you can do the ex shield into um light which does work in some cases but grand because it carries you so much you just end up hitting the wall every time wall bouncing off so i feel like that's what makes him maybe just a little bit more um, obnoxious than Catalina. Catalina, I believe, 
from what I've seen personally, may have a better fireball game and a bit more zoning potential than um, Gran, but I do think that they're very close and they're both very strong characters. Um, literally, there's so many similarities between the two. The only thing as well, Gran doesn't necessarily have a shield, but he does have an EXDP. Catalina also has an EXDP and there's just like a rated DP as well, but I feel like her armor shield, when she puts up like the ice wall, it's not as strong as people are making it out. Maybe that's just from what I've seen from like, people using her. But I've also seen people just mash, like I've done it myself. She put the shield up and I just like like um, light jab through it about three or four times, and I get a counter combo. So overall, I think Gran, if let's say Catalina's a five, uh, Gran's just like a five point five in that sense. There's not a big gap. Um, moving on now to Charlotta. I don't know. I, I, I put her above Lance a lot and I know some people have said why um, on, on my Twitter DMs um, saying why I thought this um, simply because um, from what I've seen from Charlotta her pressure is very very good she's kind of just like I don't want to compare her to Guile but she's got very good pressure and when she gets in she just mauls you down her jump is ridiculous her movement is ridiculous she has good combo damage and yeah she's just very mobile and I think that she's got she's there's a lot that we haven't seen from the character I feel like she has a lot of potential now Lancelot I feel that moving on to the oncoming patch that's coming out in April I feel like some changes are going to be made with him um, his records in some situations are either plus or neutral um, he's very strong but what I said what I personally think makes him lower than Charlotta and why I'm not saying Charlotta is better but I feel like Charlotta can in some situations depending on who she's up against or whatsoever can perform better than Lancelot because of the defensive options in the game because there is an, a block button when you're fighting Lancelot you don't really have to think you can just kind of like autopilot R2 down up down up down up like oh he's hitting low down do you know what I mean so when people are doing cross-ups or they're going in for setups, the only thing you have to worry about is just tech and grab. That is it. That is it. If he's on an air jump, jump up and grab him, air throw. Um, the situations that he can put you in aren't necessarily bad. I think the only problem that I've personally had of him is his EX dash. I feel like it could be a bit more punishable where he just kind of like dashes forward and like pokes you with his um, dagger. Could be a bit more punishable. And then alongside that, his EX fireball properties are quite weird um, I'm not sure why it doesn't trade with other EXs and when other EX fireballs clash with it they both just go through each other so it's a bit it's a bit awkward um, his EX fireball completely destroys the Zerga in armor for some reason I thought the Zerga would be able to like power through it when he's got stacks and whatever um, because the Zerga can actually tank supers so it's a bit weird but other than that Lancelot is definitely one of the strongest characters in the game at the moment but he's not busted simply because you can pressure him back or bully him back and, his def and you can just defend by holding R2 so that really um, like tampers with how good he could potentially be um, and the same can be said for Narmaya, I haven't gone into it yet but I know she has a cross up but if you're just holding R2 she crosses you up the game automatically turns you around and you're blocking on that side so it kind of removes that type of factor from the game like when it, if your character is kind of like cross up mix up heavy the block button just literally get, lets you go to autopilot and just removes that now stepping into the a ranks i've put zeta as um potentially the strongest um a rank character at the moment i feel that this character has even from me playing her um, i have had some complaints with a few things but the potential was there um i feel like a a buff in the wrong way um, could actually make or break the character she's very very strong her laser beam is very strong she can charge it delay it all of that um, her pogo stick is actually quite strong if you don't anti air her um, sometimes it's quite hard to in the corner when she gets really safe set up she can do overheads um, her range like her standing 5m 2m um, 2u uh, 5h she's got incredible incredible attacks um, and her 2, uh, 2 H as well was very good for anti-airing and if you can't time it 
if you do um, down 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 um, heavy which is her EX stance, um, sorry EX lance where she goes up up and that's unblockable in the air so she's got very good anti air options and you, she won't get in no sorry you won't get in unless you want you to her armor is very good she's got a high or low which she has to guess but her EX one I believe blocks both um, options and then she can do EXH where she just jumps over so if she's in the corner she wants to get out she will so I feel like with a lot of the patches that are coming out and the updates that she's going to be one of the potentially one of the strongest characters in the game um, especially if they're going to introduce new defensive mechanisms or improve the defense to make characters like Matera very not so obnoxious and her laser beams actually beat fireballs so this one's going to say so she can't get zoned out by like Fairy or Catalina or Gran um, simply because um, her laser beam will just go through right so a good fairy player will know how. Sorry, a good Zeta player will know how to uh, utilize her strengths, as well as covering her weaknesses. Now, now Maya, I feel like she's one of those characters. I don't really have to talk much about her because everyone knows she's very strong, in my opinion. I think she's very strong. Um, she's more of a. I'm not saying high risk, but the more time you put into the character, the more skill you have with them. High execution, you get more reward for the character. Her combos in the corner are crazy. I've seen people do 60%, 70%. So she's definitely one of the strongest characters in the game. The only thing that's holding her back, and it's not really a setback for the character, it's more of just human error. The, it's just um, people may struggle to do her combos or whatsoever. There are easy inputs, but she's definitely one of the strongest characters in the game. Um, but yet again, what kind of holds her back is when she does a mix up from left to right or right to left, there's the R2 button which blocks um, cross ups. That's what's holding her back. Now, moving on to Matera. Um, Matera is um, similar to Fairy, they're in the same boat. Um, the only reason what's knocked Matera down is that her setups aren't as obnoxious as Fairy. Um, Fairy's got Gigi. Um, Matera she can make the butterflies come out right if she shoots them the butterflies explode and then she can get cells from that the thing with Matera she's a true zoner and I'm not saying I don't respect fairy but once you get in on Matera it's kind of hard for her to get out she doesn't have really escape tools she doesn't have a DP she has a double jump which is actually really good for her movement so she can she can like maneuver around the battlefield which is kind of like the aim of the character maneuver zone shoot your arrows and all of that which is good um, but I feel that with Matera one of the things that holds her back is definitely um, her, her what do you call it yeah once you get in necessarily so it's just her defense so once you get in on the character you can just blow her up one two mix up so for example Percival if he gets in with stacks it's very hard to get him off you um, so Matera she's very good for what she does but I feel like once, if, if they do decide to um, put in um, more defense options like dash blocking um, and have a better evade system because people you can evade and people can just mash light and you still get hit so maybe just tweak that a little bit um, but if they implemented dash blocking Matera and Fairy would not be as obnoxious as they are now now one of the strengths of Matera is uh, butterflies that she can actually call out um, when she calls those out what I've actually noticed is when she detonates it it's not an explosion on the butterfly it's a straight line so even if you try to jump over you can't because the butterfly actually pre prevents you from doing that so Matera has a lot of setups she can shoot a butterfly um, detonate it do an overhead get a counter combo all of that so she's a very strong character but I feel like she's not as obnoxious as fairy simply because fairy has so much key card tools um, and I feel like hers are maybe slightly better than Matera's um, now moving on to Percival, he's actually my main at the moment, him and Tower. I feel like with Percival, he has potential to be an S rank character if they make some changes to the character. Now his normals aren't necessarily amazing because they've it's like a double edged sword. You can get big rewards for it like it's 5H, um, 5H confirmed into 214 EX and then you get the heavy stab. Loads of damage, loads of setups after that. Um, 214 medium all of that those are setups um, but I feel like what holds the character back is the game doesn't let you 
utilize his um, charges really well. And what I mean by this is just that the properties of them aren't good. And that's just from my personal experience. Other than combo extensions, which are amazing, the actual firewall game is terrible. And what I mean by this is I'd prefer it if when he's got no charges, he does his fireball. Fair enough, it doesn't go to the end of the screen. But when it clashes with other fireballs with no stacks, no orbs, it neutralizes, which makes sense. So why then when he has stacks, say and the maximum he could have is five. When he has five stacks, shoots the fireball, and then it still clashes with regular fireballs. And what I mean by this is if they could buff it to where if he has orbs, his fireballs are stronger than sorry about that, stronger than regular fireballs, and then but then his buffed fireballs um, alongside going to the end of the screen uh, being stronger, but they will still lose to like anyone else's EX fireball or lasers. That's that is fair. I feel like it'd give him more strength with having stacks rather than just looking for combo extensions because he's still losing the fireball game against characters like Catalina, Gran. Um, it doesn't make sense, even Lancelot, because Lancelot is a prime example. If Lancelot does EX, ice, the Ice Fireball, it hits um, other EXs, but it still goes through. Now, the change I'd like for Percival, personally, is what, what I'm keeping him where he is right now for A rank, is because I feel like with Orbs, his Fireball should overpower regular fireballs but still lose the EXs and then his EX fireball should be equal with other EXs that I feel like that would make the character more stronger and then kind of equal the playing field with other characters I feel like that would be a very very good buff for Percival but I definitely feel that not allowing him to have more diversity with his orbs is what's kind of keeping him back from like going into the deeper depths of just like A plus or even a, um, S rank and other than that, his mediums um, and his HS, as I said, it's kind of like a double-edged sword. Some of it's punishable depending on what you do with it. The recovery of his normal aren't necessarily good, but if he does hit you, expect big damage. Now, Beelzebub, this character's good. Um, I've simply put him at B rank simply because I haven't seen much from the character. And what I have seen from him in ranked or in videos, he has good damage potential. Um, good zoning tools with his um, little spikes that he can throw out, good range, but I feel that his his options aren't really great from what he can do. So an example would be, um, I don't want to compare it to other fighting games, but let's say Dalsim from Street Fighter, okay? So you have Dalsim who can um, teleport, it's called Yoga, Yoga Teleport or whatever, he can choose where he teleports, in the air, on the floor, forward, backwards, diagonal up, you get what I mean, right? You press teleport with Beelzebub, you immediately teleport behind the enemy from what I've seen, right? When he teleports behind the enemy, there's recovery frames. I've seen people, I've done it myself, he teleports mash 5L, just keep mashing 5L, you're gonna hit him. So I feel like that's one of the setbacks. His air dive it's kind of obvious, you see him jump in the air, he charges, you can just EXDP him out of the sky or just anti air him. Um, and I feel like that's, that's kind of what makes him a d um, dangerous. It's just that he kind of opens himself up to certain situations. Um, his EX kind of like barrier, which is his DP to get off, to get off me tool, it's good, but I, I, don't know, I don't know how to express it, but I feel like with other characters, um, it's, it's just the generic thing, like you, you, you can expect it when it's coming. Um, and as the character is, his movement speed's very bad. So if he's on the DP, you can just, you kind of just like stay in his face. He can't really get away from you, so you can force him to, you can force him into DP because he doesn't like pressure. He wants to zone you out, keep you at like mid screen range where he can poke you and bait you to do things. But if you get in on him and just blow him up, the character's not really going to do much. So other than damage output, I'd say that he's kind of, he's not bad, but he, he could reach into the A ranks with a few more buffs. Now, the Diva is just a standard grappler in the game. Um, I feel that the character is fair. I, I like what they've done in the game where they've made 
command grabs um, not necessarily seeable in some aspect but the range isn't obnoxious and I do feel like that's what kind of holds Ladiva back I'm not saying buff her um, his her range with the grab but um, I feel that in neutral like once you know what she does with the lariats and all of that you can kind of you know bait her out to just EX lariats and some of them I believe you can duck and punish so if it was just a mid lariat and then she can you know continue to pressure that way or she does the headbutts and all that stuff so she is strong but I definitely feel like especially with where the game is now where you've got very strong zoners Catalina, Fairy, um, Matera, even Lancelot to some to some extent um, and Gran and Zeta where you can just keep keep them out 24-7 um, she may struggle so I just definitely feel like once they implement dash block may buff some people in certain ways this tier list may even may even turn upside down who knows um low aim very is is not strong i'm not gonna say he's weak he's, he's a good character but it's just gimmicks once you kind of figure him out um the low aim player would start to struggle now the thing with low aim is that what makes him strong is obviously he's gonna have generic setups every character has setups um, and things that they like to abuse or whatsoever but what makes gimmicky characters so strong is that every person plays them differently so you're never going to run into the same playstyle and I know that's across the board for like every character in the fighting game everyone plays differently but with gimmicky characters their setups are gimmicky but it's a different person that you're fighting if, if you understand what I'm trying to say um, so people will have different setups or different things whereas Percival you're going to expect him to say 5H, 2.4 medium and then try and command grab you that or just footsie that's just the standard where low end players can just freestyle uh, and his super skybound art the, when he calls you I think that's her name sorry forgive me if I said, said it wrong um, but the big lady she's also quite obnoxious if you don't know what to do so that's definitely why I'm putting him there but he's a wild card that's that's the best way I can explain it. Now, finally, the last character that I want to talk about is Viserga. They've, I think they've balanced him very well in the game. Obviously, he's slow. He's, I don't want to say very slow, but he's slow. He's a walking tank. He can just dish out damage. He can tank. Um, he can face tank supers. And I think that he's very strong. He's even got a command grab. But the main thing that holds him back is the fact of the defensive options in the game now i feel like if there was dash blocking and even just like better defense options he'd probably be an a rank or s tier character minimum minimum literally because the matchup for him versus fairy or matera is unplayable now it's literally unplayable because you it's it's one player mode you know rpg mode where you have to call in your partner that's what he needs he needs that to jump in and help him it's unplayable so I hope to God that at some point in the patch coming up that they implement dash blocking and better defense options. But that's my tier list for now for this season. I believe this is season one. So this is my season one tier list. I hope you guys um, enjoyed this video. Um, don't forget to leave a like, a thumbs up, and also post your comments down below. And let me know what you think about the game. But yeah.